Welcome to Premier Perspectives. This is a series of podcasts highlighting the latest issues and trends multinational business leaders need to know. I'm your host, Bruce Lee, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Conrad Dieters, who will be discussing his work on the employee value proposition. So, Conrad, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Uh, before, You're welcome. Oh, great. <laughs> so, before we get started, can you uh, give you a little bit of background uh, about yourself so our listeners know more about you? Yeah, thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, appreciate it. My name is Conrad, Conrad Dieters. I'm based in Germany. And I'm leading within Mercer's multinational client group, the career consulting globally, all of what Mercer does in terms of HR consulting and products and our service offerings in that space. And certainly today, uh, we want to talk about EVP. So I'm with Mercer, by the way, since 10 years, and I'm a partner okay. in the Mercer Germany business. Okay. So when you say EVP, I know uh, what that means as a longtime Mercer person myself. <laughs> uh, but could you explain, and that stands for employee value proposition. So could you explain what exactly we mean by that, the employee, employee value proposition? Yes. So that's a terminology where we see certainly also a slight change these days, uh, the move from employee value proposition to individual value proposition. Well, we talk about that mm -hmm. later. Okay, so it, it represents, in a way, a unique set of rewards. And rewards not only focus on compensation benefits, it covers tangible and intangible rewards that the company is providing for employees, starting with the purpose, you know, the career, the opportunity for making a career in the organization, as well as well-being. And that covers certainly not only the personal well-being, health uh, and, and mental well-being, but also financial well-being, and certainly compensation benefits. Employees typically receive in return for their skills, capability, and experience they bring to the company every day. In summary, an EVP defines what the employee should understand and feel about the organization, defining the give and get on the employment deal. So that's the summary as we define uh, EVP. Okay. Group. Okay. So with that with that definition, um, what usually resonates? You know, what what what? There's obviously many ways to present an EVP or an employee employee value proposition. So what usually resonates with you know prospective talent or talent in an organization? Yes, uh, and, and thank you. As mentioned before, it's certainly uh, important to demonstrate in the direction of individuals of employees and the firm as to how they can grow and develop uh, in the corporation, develop their career. So that's a, a first important step. In particular, millennials are very keen on that. Uh, and it's, it's uh, in essence, the deal struck between an organization and employees in return uh, for their contributions and their performance. Uh, they work hard, but they want to some, some sort of also be rewarded uh, in, in the discussed uh, uh, way we, we heard before. An EVP is often aligned with the company's culture and values, and as such, can be used to promote the company's brand in the external market to attract new talent and distinguish your company from competitors. So that's, uh, mm -hmm. in essence, uh, probably for many companies, the most important element of it these days, where talent is going to be difficult to find the requisite talent. It's also the reason why an employee would want to work uh, at a company as opposed to find, finding em employment somewhere else. So if this is the deal between the company and the individual. It supports uh, the employee experience from recruitment to retire. It's, it's not only once employees have joined, uh, EVP starts already to unfold an importance from a recruitment perspective, from an onboarding perspective, uh, followed by all of the process steps uh, in the in the let's say life cycle of an individual in a firm. Taking a consumer approach to developing an EVP is also quite important. It all changes from treating employees like employees to treating employees like customers in the firm to mm. engage them to connect with them uh, as individuals. 
Okay, yeah, that, that makes that actually a lot question? of sense. Yeah, yes, it does. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. So, okay, so we hear a lot about this, right? Uh, and and there's talent crunches all over the world, and all sorts of workforce demographics. So, so why is this getting this right? You know, the EVP so important for companies and employees. You know, more than ever, I would I, I would yeah. venture. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> and it actually is because uh, you know, all of us are going through a, uh, a time, an era of disruption. You know, we talk about Industry 4.0. We talk about the disruption that hits all of the industries. Uh, you know, some have been hit already heavily. Uh, just, just to mention a few, the oil and gas industry, as well as the financial services industry, insurance companies, etc. But that will move on to all of the other industries or has already arrived. Hence, uh, the businesses are some kind of in a transformation period where they have to change mm -hmm. certain business strategy uh, as well as uh, operating model in order to be, become more virtual, uh, you know, to embed uh, the, the latest technologies, to become more versatile, uh, to allow for continuous learning through change and uh, foster teamwork and collaboration. And at the same time, this is this covers the business perspective, but also employees are certainly hit by this uh, by the disruption. Uh, what is changing to them? And this is just a high level summary. Uh, employees are becoming more vocal. They are speaking up. They are confronted with a different kind of pace powered by technology. And certainly need to make sure, on the other hand, uh, you know, that the customer is, is made happy, but they also require and request uh, the treatment uh, of a consumer, of a customer. So mm -hmm. this is what we, what we summarize on the consumer experience. Mm -hmm. In essence, just to, to continue, uh, companies need to provide a holistic value proposition that resonates with each unique individual in order to attract, motivate, and actually we are exchanging the word retain by engage, because mm -hmm. engagement is probably one of the key uh, you know, issues from a workforce perspective in order to keep the, color, the talent, in order to get them engaged to deliver what the client needs. In summary, building a thriving workforce for the future to deal with the following changes. This is the mission, attract talent that is becoming more difficult. So it's really hard for many companies already, not for each and every role in the organization, for every job, but in, in particular, those jobs that help to, to drive uh, technology in the organization, to drive digital. Keeping talent is more difficult than ever before. So attracting, uh, keeping, engaging, managing talent pipeline risks. That's one of the key issues, probably not only the CHRO, but also the CFO and the CFO is concerned about. Mm -hmm. And uh, engagement and productivity risks, risks should be managed by, you know, providing a suitable EVP to the workforce. Mm -hmm. That's uh, That doesn't sound easy, but very important. So, Conrad, um, you talked about uh, the consumer approach, and I think we hear that term a lot, but um, in terms of developing an, an employee value proposition, what does that mean? How, how do you do it? Yeah, uh, good question. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, you know, it, it, it's of utmost importance to discover the factors that influence or inhibit, on the other side, a compelling experience for in individuals within the workforce. Right. This can be done by really uh, starting with executives uh, to give uh, to get their leadership perspectives, followed by employees' perspectives. Certainly, employees uh, would be asked uh, to actually provide their insights, what they you know appreciate in terms of uh, a comprehensive EVP, uh, and uh, followed by uh, you know internal labor market analysis as to how people maneuver in, in, the, in the firm from a careers perspective, from a diversity perspective, and so on. So a lot of analytics uh, need to be done in order to understand the influences or the inhibitors. That allows uh, the company to create a strategic frame, framework uh, around the EVP and plan to design and uh, deliver results. 
that can be finally implemented, uh, the design changes that have been identified, the required design changes that helps them to ex execute their vision for the future. That, uh, that is fascinating stuff, um, but unfortunately, that's, that's all the time we have for today. So, uh, Conrad, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your insights. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm sure this will be a popular podcast. <laughs> to those of you uh, <laughs> tuning in, thank you for listening. Uh, can, uh, let's continue this conversation uh, by visiting the Mercer Premier Digital Platform to connect with Conrad and, and read the research uh, he's done and, and some of the other interesting insights he's had. As a reminder, you can access all episodes of the Premier Perspectives podcast series on the Mercer Premier Digital Platform. Thank you, and have a good day.